Happy Hour. Damn, son, where'd you find this? This, this should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Listen to me, Randy. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, whether you're white or black or Sasquatch even. As long as you follow your dream, no matter how crazy or against the law it is. Except for Sasquatch. If you're Sasquatch, the rules are different. Forget it, Meatwad. I'm a circus freak. That's all I'll ever be. Whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in, too. Ha, uh, how the hell are you doing? This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, hanging out with you for the next hour. Call the show and leave me a voicemail, 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. And oh, we have so much to get into. What the hell? And I mean, what the hell is going on with Netflix? This morning, sharing your favorite Netflix binge with a buddy may soon come at a price. The streaming giant behind hits like Inventing Anna. Who's more famous? Oh, it's such a good show. It's right now the Donna Dalvey. The Tiger King and Bridgerton. Yes, that is why I thought of it. So basically all the basic things that basic boring people watch. Oh, did you see Tiger King? Oh, did you see Bridgerton? I basically just watch what they tell me to watch. I'm a sheep. I have no original opinion. Shit's Creek is the funniest show ever. So is The Office. Oh my God, I love Duke basketball. I'm a basic boring American. Announcing Wednesday that it's cracking down on sharing passwords with someone outside your household. Oh, man. All of a sudden, they're about to lose a lot of business. Because, I mean, let's be honest here. How much good content does Netflix put out? I'm not saying they don't put out good content, but, like, it's very average. Like, Ozark is, like, the pinnacle of amazing TV. My girlfriend doesn't really dig it. She doesn't really get it. But she needs things that have, like, ghosts and fairies in it. And I want to see a badass game banger. That's more my vibe. So in this household, we kind of have a little bit of a separation when it comes to what we watch on TV. But let me tell you. She watches all the shows on Netflix, and it's just for a person who's okay with average acting. And my girlfriend will even say that. She's like, it's so bad that it's good. For me, I like elite acting, and you don't really get that from Netflix shows unless it's got Jason Bateman in it. I mean, let's be real here. You are a basic, boring person if you think the show you is good. You can find you entertaining, but if you think that serial killer is acting in a very good fashion, like if you think that is just the picture perfect portrayal of acting because some people treat that show they're like dude his character when he gets really evil and you that's top notch like if you're watching you and you are thinking that is like the amazing acting then you're a very basic person you think taylor swift is good music you like to go to dunkin donuts and pay seven bucks for coffee you're pretentious in a different location it will begin testing new ways to make users sharing accounts pay additional fees and i mean you literally are just a boring person if all you watch is Netflix. You know what I mean? Because you go to Hulu to watch the classics. You go to HBO Max to watch the classics. But, like, who goes to Netflix? And I know a lot of people do, and I might just be projecting by myself, but I just don't see it being cool. And you can't even keep it on throughout the night because then it's like, do you want to keep watching? No, Netflix. I want to turn off the fucking TV and get something done with my day. Of course I want to keep watching it. I don't get why they have that setting. Do you want to keep watching Netflix? Yes, I'm a fat slob. Post I live in America. Posting a statement to its website saying, we've always made it easy for people who live together to share their Netflix account. While these have been hugely popular. And hurting our bank account. They have hurting our bottom line. Also created some confusion about when and how Netflix can be shared. I would say Netflix is good for like four good things a year. Remember when everybody thought Bird Box was a good movie? Man. No wonder the rest of the world hates us. We think Bird Box is a good movie. Happy hour. Happy hour. 
Oh, yeah. Happy hour. We'll be right back. This following segment was brought to you by FitzAgeFitness.com. Fit underscore Sage underscore Fitness on Instagram. When I tell you that Devin Prasad is the best trainer in all of the Bay Area, I'm a man of my words. You can do virtual workouts if you don't live in Florida. But if you do live in Florida, you can work out with him in person within the Tampa Bay region. I just said that weird. Don't, don't know why. Uh, but here's the thing. However you want to work out with Devin, virtually or in person, all you got to do is go to fitstagefitness.com and tell him I sent you, man. Happy hour. Happy hour. This little Bizarre. guy. Buddy, if I had a peanut, I'd give Bizarre. it to you. Bizarre. I love you. Bizarre. I love you. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Happy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh my God. Let me tell you. Plagiarism on TikTok is getting out of control. 856-49-HOPPY. 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. But yeah, back to my point about uh, plagiarism on TikTok. Uh... I'm done with TikTok. For a second there, I thought TikTok was pretty cool, but there should be a rule that if one person puts up one concept of a TikTok, no one should be allowed to copy it. There's a lot of the millennials that are working at home. And like one person will come up with a funny video that gets like 980,000 likes and it's hilarious. And maybe it's about a Zoom call or something that we all can relate to, like pandemic humor. And it's funny. And I share it with my girlfriend. It's a great video. Then the next day, I'll see the same concept and it's somebody with 70,000 likes. Then the next day, I'll see 70 downloads. What I'm saying is every day, I will see the original video and then I will see the other ones that are copying it that aren't as popular. And then you'll see somebody that does it with like 10 likes and you're like, does no one have originality anymore? No, like I'm asking you, 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. Is originality dead? Because for me, man, I would rather put out genuine original content than be a hack, than be a copycat. Like I find the radio people who will take segments from other radio shows and they expect their listeners to never know, I copied Howard Stern. I copied Elvis Duran. Good for you. You made a lot of money, but you're a hack. I would rather be a genuine person than be a hack. Because being a hack is a very underratedly awful thing. Oh, yeah, he did a big morning show, but he kind of copied Howard. Oh, they did a big morning show, but they copied Elvis Duran. Like, you're living in the shadows of somebody because you're not relevant and you're not talented to have your own original content, so you got to copy others. And you see that in sports, people trying to be curry by shooting threes. You see that in comedy. Everyone tries to talk like John Mulaney now. It's like, just be yourself, dude. There's only one of the other person you're trying to be, and they are going to always be the best at being themselves. So be yourself. Oh, happy hot topic. A Russian court has extended the detention of WNBA star Brittany Griner. And- Why are you bringing a pen to Russia? Till May 19th. Uh, that can't be fun in that Russia prison. I can imagine someone like her, and it's a little privileged, it's a little American, it's a professional athlete who can think she can do whatever the hell she wants, because she's Brittany Griner, she's the first girl to ever dunk a basketball. Uh, what I'm saying to you is this, I'm saying I'm sure being in Russia is a huge wake-up call for her. I think it's a little different. <laughs> Griner has been detained for several weeks after Russian officials said they found vape cartridges containing oil. Derived- oh, the criminal you are trying to relax your anxiety, you bitch. How dare you? Fucking God, enough of it. Oh, I'm going to ruin people's lives over a weed cart. Fuck you and your fucking hack of a life. Go fuck yourself arrived from cannabis in her luggage at a Moscow airport. The U.S. State Department says it's doing everything it can to see that she is treated properly. Trump would have got it done by now. 
and to see. No one cares about us. We are the joke of America. And you can tell me, oh, everything Trump did is why everything sucks. But Biden sucks too. We need somebody to just go on a platform and go, bitch, free Brittany Griner. And we got you, baby. Make her release. Like, we just need that. We need someone to go to the podium and go, hey, Russia, can we get Brittany back? The WNBA really needs her. They can use anything they can get. Hey. Oh, I'm such a big fan of the WNBA. Oh, never mind. What's going on? Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube Hey, channel. Al Roker. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews. And no one really cares, even though the weight loss of Al Roker is an underrated thing. I don't care if you got it squeezed out of him. Got to give it props. Give props where it's due. Uplifting stories. Yeah. Shop our favorite deals uh -huh. and so much more with... Shop our favorite deals, the people that we are promoting that we get a little bit of the uh, income from. Oh, Al Roker, I see what you're doing there at the Today Show. You're a little irrelevant. <laughs> so you guys are having them promote things so you can make that money. Speaking of places that are making the money. Oh, happy hot topic. From busy beaches to packed bars. We're going to have a blast this week. Watch out for COVID. You can't be packed in a bar. That was so last year. Now everyone's like, fuck it, life's short. Let's get drunk and black out on the beach. Remember? And I'm not saying it's a good or bad thing. Remember two years ago, if you were to have gone to the beach or you were to have a party, people in Los Angeles were shutting down electricity. And now everyone's like, let's party, let's party. I think it was when you saw that the elite piece of garbage, fucking pieces of shit, like Gavin Newsom, and Nancy Pelosi, all of these ass wipes who were being so hard. You must always wear the mask. Even when you are dead in the ground, you must have a mask on. And then they're the ones that were caught never wearing masks. It didn't really help the precedent of everything going on the last two years when the left side is like, mask, mask, mask. You must wear a mask. And then they're out in public like, yeah, masks suck. It didn't really help your credibility. Now, did it? And a sleeping president. Oh, yeah, things are going great. Oh, Things were wonderful with Trump. I'm just saying, everything sucks. Trump sucked. Biden sucks. And uh, <laughs> so does Kamala. <laughs> Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. I'm in a great mood. Uh, this following segment was brought to you by WestChasePrinting.com. When I tell you that they are the best printing company in all of the Bay Area, I'm a man of my words. Go to WestChasePrinting.com, and when you get that invoice, tell them I sent you. Happy hour. Happy hour. Finally, I'm one of those guys who can't wait to get to work in the morning. Like a dairy cow. Oh, 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 yes, yes, oh. Please don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in, too. All right. I just thought that was a funny way to go to break, making a joke about Kamala, Kamala, whatever her name is. I'm glad I don't know how to say her dumb name. I hate all politicians. But I thought that one liner I said was pretty funny, but we didn't actually get to this news clip about the spring breakers. So let's get right into it. From busy beaches to packed bars. Yeah. We're going to have a blast this weekend. Thousands are letting loose this spring break, migrating south for some sand, surf, and sun. And you can leave. and You can go back to New York. All you New Yorkers that were judging Florida two years ago now trying to move here. Bye. You can go back to New York and pay the high taxes and having every governor be a groper. You can go back. Oh, now you want to come to Florida? Fuck you. You could just tell how it is in the clubs and stuff. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> I was getting a blowjob from someone I think was a girl. <laughs> And drinks are just flowing. But yeah. Yeah, drinks are really flowing with about two drips of alcohol. Let's be honest here. I have, okay, yeah, guys, guys, I have the tip of the day from Ryan John Hoppy of the award winning Hoppy Hour podcast. I have some breaking news about when you go on vacation. I have the inside scoop. I don't know if you really want to hear it, though. Like, do you want to hear the advice I'm going to give you? 
All right. Because this is a big moment in happy hour. I never thought I would share this secret that I learned seven days ago while on vacation on a Mike Helter cruise. Okay. So me, Mike Olivero, and Gio from the Mike Kelta Show are hanging out in these cabanas while comedians Mike Cannon and uh, Brendan Sagalo and Mike Feeney and Robert Kelly and Agent Tony Byrne and uh, Kelta are all in the water. Me, Gio, Olivero are under the tents. And he's, we, we were in Mexico and he's like, Mexicans the whole day. It doesn't matter what ethnicity, I'm just saying. And they came over and they're like, hey, do you guys want drinks? Because uh, Calta was very generous and paid for our cabanas, so we got free drinks with a wristband. And we're like, okay, we'll take a rum run or whatever. And they bring the drinks to you. When you order a drink, when you're sitting back and you're ordering a drink and you're not watching them make it and they bring it to you, it's not going to have any booze. Like if you're sitting in a cabana and you're like, I trust these people that they're going to hook me up with so much booze because I'm a dumb American to them. And literally I'm in their country making a mess that they're going to have to clean up and they think we're idiots anyway. So do you really think they're going to be like, oh, to this piece of garbage American, I'm going to hook you up with a lot of alcohol? Or do you think any time of inflation, they're going to go, we're going to only give you a few drips. Whatever the drinks were given to me, Olivero and Gio, oh yeah, there was no booze in there. I was like drinking a slushy. But when I went to the bar that provided the drinks, when I went to the bar, and I put a little 20 in a tip jar because you got unlimited drinks. Oh, yeah, then it was a party. <laughs> then I had the diarrhea later from all the Jack Daniels. <laughs> all I'm saying is you got to manifest your drinks. If you want to have a good drink, you can't just rely on them. You got to like kind of like look at them hard too. Like when they're making a drink, make sure that they are aware that you are watching. I'm an alcoholic. Alcoholism runs in my family. So trust me when I say I am the authority on getting drunk at a reasonable rate. No! Happy Hot Topic! Along with the fun in the sun and long nights of drinking. Yeah! It's getting out of control. <laughs> All these idiots from Omaha, like visiting, are probably like acting up. Because let me tell you why I just used Omaha as an example. You know, like whenever you're out on vacation, if you're on a cruise or you're at the beach and you're drinking it up, um, if you live in somewhere that's warm weather, so like I've lived in Florida for seven years. I was in Cleveland for three months. I tried to suppress it. It's like a Bad dream. Uh, and then I grew up in Chicago for 21 years. So essentially, 21 years in Chicago, 25% of my life so far in Florida. And you kind of take the heat for granted, man. You kind of take the sun for granted. You're like, oh, yeah, it's kind of there. So then when you go on a cruise, you're not as excited as the person who's from Omaha where it's been cloudy and negative 20 every day. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're going to be like, oh, my God. So what I notice a lot on these cruises and uh, whenever I go to beach bars is it's the people who are having like a quarter life crisis and they're getting married and this is like their vacation that they're saving up their money for. Kind of like a bachelor party, but not really. So on the cruise, there was this dude wearing a Hawaiian shirt, man. He was so cool. And he was walking around. He's like maybe 31, 32. And he was like, I'm a male nurse. I'm, I'm like, cool, bro. He looks like his name would have been like Jeremy. He's just douchey, kind of a little long hair. Looked like a surfer, but like short. And he was in short hair. And him and his friend, who was like this pretty boy with small teeth, they were from like the middle of nowhere, Kentucky. And uh, they were making a fool of themselves. And it's because, like, it's both of them on a cruise. They're never going to see people anymore. So you have the people who were held captive for two years, not literally, but during COVID, the people that were in the Lexington, Kentuckys of the world, in the Omaha, Nebraska's, and now they're on vacation, and you're surprised that it's becoming chaos? When you lock up people for two years, don't be surprised when things get crazy. In the sun and long nights of drinking, it's getting out of control. Yeah. The Miami Beach's famed Ocean Drive was shut down after partiers swarmed the streets. Oh my God, let's get a drinking arrest and get our girlfriends and mothers mad at us. And chaos erupted. And have our rich uncles pay off the legal bills. Their early Sunday, when a shooting sent three people to local hospitals. Yeah. Security cameras capturing the terrifying scene. Uh, okay. I'm not going to manifest it. I'm not going to say anything that's going to make it happen. But I've never been around like an active shooter moment. But let me tell you, I don't know how I would do it, man. 
the suspect remains at large. Local officials have been on guard for weeks. I wonder what it's like being at large. <laughs> Trust me, I, I would know. But seriously, when you're a criminal that's at large and you cause a huge shooting in Miami, I wonder what it's like when you realize at some point, at some moment in your life, you're going to get caught. I wonder what that moment is like for the criminals. Given last year's mayhem, which saw clashes with police and led to an emergency. Yeah, let's punch a cop in the face and have a lot of legal issues. That sounds like a fun night. Let's have 12 shots of vodka by the by 9 p.m. and then get blackout drunk and be hung over in a jail cell. Yeah, let's visit Miami, bro. Yeah. <laughs> douchebags. Douchebags, douchebags, a douchebags. Emergency curfew. Mm. Why does do this? Oh. Emergency curfew. Elsewhere in the states, curfews are going into effect. In New Smyrna Beach, police say it's bedlam with kids crawling on top of buildings. Gross. That's the thing, too, is all these assholes, then they come here and they... Here's the problem. And you see this a lot of theme parks. Like, if you go to Disney or Universal, the Florida... And I'm not acting like a Floridian where I think I'm better than the people that are visiting, but there's this mindset of the assholes from up north that come to Florida to visit... That they, they make a mess and they're like, well, I'm visiting. I'm giving you money so I can be a complete asshole. No wonder you live in the middle of nowhere and you're only visiting Florida once a year. You have a loser mentality that you don't think people live here. Fuck you and your northern selves. Oh, we're better than you, but we're going to try to move here. God. Throwing business furniture into the road and accosting business employees. People live here. People, I think what happens is when you're around, because I felt this in Cleveland, man. I didn't see the sun once in Cleveland. It was not a morning glory. Uh, but here was the problem was the fact that when I moved to Florida, all of a sudden you see the sun and you're like, oh my God, oh my God, I've never seen the sun. I live in Cleveland. It's an awful city. But now I live in Florida and I see the sun and it causes you to go a little mad. It causes you to go a little crazy. It causes you to go a little loco. And that's what happens when these people visit from the Midwest. All of it triggering a strict 60 day curfew yeah. to limit the number of people out on the town. Of you know what the you know what the cops need to do and the mayor of these towns is they need to have a billboard of them looking like parents on the beach. If you're like, welcome to Daytona Beach. Have as much fun as you want and don't worry about anything. Cause if you act like a dork and you say it's cool, no one's going to act up because they're gonna be like, oh, the cops and the mayor and Everybody wants us to behave or wants us to not behave, so then we're going to behave. It's the opposite logic. Like I've said the whole time that people that are so for being vaccinated, you should have just been anti-vax. So you could have had Joe Biden, which I think you could have just told him that anyway, and he would have believed it. And I don't think he knows what he even is ever thinking, but you could have him go up there and go, oh yeah, don't get vaxxed. And then have all the liberals know that it's just a keyword to get vaxxed. And then all the people on the right would be like, he doesn't know what he's talking about, get vaccinated. It's the same thing with uh, people visiting these towns. Just make it seem like it's cool to be an asshole and then it won't happen. Overnight. And in one Florida panhandle community, authorities even implementing an 8 p.m. curfew. Uh, that sounds fun. Sounds like that's going to really work out. Like, this is going to really work out for them in the end. Like They're making the best decisions possible. For anyone under the age of 21, yeah. unless they're with a parent. Oh, that sounds fun. Really bringing in the business to Florida. There are kids running and screaming and yelling. Uh, sounds like my apartment complex. <laughs> and hiding in the bushes. <laughs> I'm going to get the pool. I'm trying to relax. I don't know. I was such an awkward was. Is the word there. I put the word was in front of awkward. Like, I was awkward. Like, I'm not awkward anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the pool, and I just saw these kids, like, screaming. They were between the ages of, like, 13 to 16, and they're just yelling. And I'm like, I was, I was such an awkward, quiet kid that when I was in public, I just kind of, you know, like, behaved kind of, kind of. I never get the teenagers that are like, yeah, let's scream. Yeah, 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 let's scream. What are you screaming about? The everything, like, I just was so quiet as a kid. I was loud, but I was quiet, you know? It's also because I didn't have, like, any friends growing up or anything. So I was just like, you know, let me see what this is. Kid screaming in class video. I want to see what this provides. <laughs> That was not what I expected, but let me see here. 
If I can get kids screaming in class compilation. We've got to that point of the show. Compilation, not compilation. Mm, damn! Oh, jeez. That shit good! Oh, wow. This. <sighs> so it's a guy who's doing reaction videos to kids in class. Oh. <sighs> Maybe I should have brought some prep to this segment, man. I, I did. The prep is the words that comes into my mouth, that comes into my brain, that I spew out of my mouth. I should probably go to break the regroup. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you about the best podcasting network in all of the Bay Area and the world, quadpod.com, Q-O-D-P-O-D.com. If you ever land around the house and you're like, oh, my God. Not only is Ryan Hoppy and Hoppy Hour and Hoppy Radio the best content ever, I've listened to all of it. I have legitimately listened to every single second I can of Ryan Hoppy. I want to listen to something new. Well, if you go to quadpod.com, Q-O-D-P-O-D.com slash Ryan Hoppy, you can see my work. And then when you're done and you double check to make sure you listen to everything, all the best podcasts in all of the whole wide world can be found at quadpod.com. Happy hour. Happy hour. Like a uh, $9,000 prostitute, please. Who? Oh, do you have nine $1,000 ones? Yeah, good. And if you got an albino, send her up too. In uh, like 20 minutes, I'm going to be asleep, so get them up here. I had like half a bottle of melatonin, six beers, this whole f- bucket of chicken. Oh, the Sandman is coming. He never holds back. And he speaks his mind. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. What is? Listen to a radio show on the planet. Seventy dollars. Stations are tuned in too. Happy Hot Topic. This morning, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are in the Caribbean, and they have to let everybody know by taking a bunch of pictures because they can't live in the moment because they're bad people. We must let everybody know that we're out and about hanging out with you fucking peasants. We got away from Prince, from Prince Andrew for about five minutes, and we're going to go around the Caribbean and pretend like we care about poor people because we're good people. We are the royal family. We are full of dignity and honor. We got to let everybody know, though. Pick your time. Get over here, kids. Pick your time because... By taking pictures, that implies that we cared about the people we were visiting, and it wasn't just a photo op to make our family look good after Prince Andrew. Picture time. Get over here. Hey, guys. I'm Kate Middleton. I have the personality of a dead rat. Yeah. 856 Happy. And already making a splash as they kick off their royal tour. Yeah. This is- that was the first splash that happened in their, in their relationship for a minute. This is our lungs. This is our property. Even before the couple landed in Belize, yeah. some residents staged a protest. <laughs> reportedly for Williams' ties to a conservation group that's in a land dispute with the village. So they don't even want you to visit. And they're like, but, but we, we want to get our photo ops. I love that. I honestly love that. I love that somebody finally stood up to the royal family. It's not like it's going to make a difference because protests never really do. But what I'm saying, they just, never mind. But what I'm saying is, I like that they, they, they like printed out signs. Like they're in another country and they printed out signs and they did a protest. It says, Prince William, quit helping FFI take our land. Like I like that they got on their feet and they did something. Our land is for we. And- our land is for we and we need land for our children. I agree. That's how life works. But the royal family, they got anything they can have. So they don't get what it's like to have one piece of property. We need land for our children. The pushback forced the royals to revise plans and yeah. visit a different area. Oh, yeah. Oh, Count Prince William. I'm such a man of honor and class. Fuck you. They see that that country's not dumb and not bowing down to their badass teeth. Oh, you guys don't know what a dentist is in Britain. My God, get a dentist. Here's what I'm saying. Prince William and Kate Middleton are such scumbag rats because they saw that they had a bunch of haters in that country and they're like, we're going somewhere else to avoid conflict because we must do the photo ops to let everybody know that we are such good people. We have nice, clean missionary sex and we don't know what a toothbrush is. 
But despite the detour, they did receive a warm welcome moments after touching down. Oh, that's good thing. I'm so glad they got a warm welcome because that would not be a pretentious real trip unless you kiss their ass. Get out of here. Complete with a 21 gun salute. Both Kate and William. Trump would have got 24 guns. More shades of blue. A nod to the host country. Ah, oh, whatever. Fuck them. Everybody kisses their ass. Why do they matter? They're going to die someday. Someday they're not going to exist. And they're going to be nothing more than the air you're looking at. They're no different than us. They poop too. I bet her poop smells awful. But his is pretentious. He just looks like his crap would smell pretentious. Like awful. Who cares that they were born into royalty? Why do we kiss their ass in 2022? They're losers. They're losers. God, I just, I don't get it. And then everybody lives the fairy tale. All the boomers. Oh, but I like Bridgerton. I like Downton Abbey. Do you like uh, covering up pedophilia like Prince Andrew did? Oh, we're only going to talk about the good parts of the royal family. What good parts? You both have talked very candidly. It's a very famous Will Smith story, infidelity in the marriage, and how you navigated that. Yeah, there's a lot of cheating. That time. Never, there's never been infidelity in our marriage. How uncool is Will Smith now? Jada Pinkett Smith was banging one of Jaden's friends, which... I didn't even feel bad with that entanglement. Bro, when you put your relationship out there and you let it be open, the floodgates are open, my man. That's why people are like, can I? I've had legit, I met, in a way, swinger offers like, oh, bing, you can bang my wife if I can bang your girlfriend. Nope. And I'm not going through this routine that I went through the last show, but we're so monogamous, it's ridiculous because I'm not going to open up the floodgates. Here's the thing. Will Smith opened up the floodgates by allowing the open relationship. You can't get mad at who Jada bangs. Was it classless and kind of slutty that she banged Jaden's friend? Yeah, but she has the right to. She's an independent sexual woman. And you like to vomit after sex. Oh, you're such a good lover, though. Never been in Fidelian America? Never. Will Smith is shutting down speculation surrounding his marriage with Jada Pinkett Smith. Is it even a marriage at this point? It's a business relationship. What is the secret to getting it right for you two? Because I know you were never being around each other. Worked hard at, at marriage. We've been asking ourselves that question. Mm -hmm. And when we're in other parts of the country, we'll send a text. How do we keep this together? She's like, look at the bank account. And he's like, yeah, I'll shut up and I'll go bang Margot Robbie and you can bang someone half your age. And really, at the end of the day, it's what? just not quitting. Yeah, not giving up, even though we probably should have. But, oh, we got to keep the family together. Yeah. You know? Such a great family to Smiths. They look like they have no flaws at all. <laughs> Yuck. While chatting with Gail King on CBS Sunday morning, the Oscar nominee clears up rumors of infidelity. Clears up rumors, you guys cheated on each other. Oh, because we said there's no infidelity. It's like if I were to rob a bank. Oh, yeah. Well, he didn't rob the bank because he says he didn't. Even though there was clear proof that he was robbing the bank, I didn't rob the bank. There's no infidelity in my marriage. Infidelity within his relationship. Yeah. The couple's decades-long marriage has become a hot topic since this 2020 Red Table Talk interview, mm. where Jada revealed her, quote, entanglement with singer August Alsina. Uh, yeah, I banged your mom, bro. <laughs> Not the first time Jaden's heard that. Happy hour. Happy hour. And not the last. Happy hour will be right oh, back. Oh, yeah, it's following segment, man. Let me tell you, that was such good material. It was brought to you by ZRadioLive.com. ZRadioLive is the best top 40 radio station on Odyssey and on TuneIn. And they're on a bunch of other platforms at ZRadioLive.com. Programmed by my guy, Zach Feldman. Here's the thing, though. Thursdays, 5 p.m. East Coast time, 4 p.m. Central. Guess what show is on Z Radio Live? Happy hour. Yeah. Happy hour. Well, it was good while it lasted, I guess. But Sheriff, the glory hole is the pride and joy of Dougal County. Fella found an even older glory hole two towns over. Lord knows I ain't looking forward to telling the tourism board about this. Such an elegant concept. A simple lowly hole to commemorate his glory. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. 
Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh, Wendy Williams is back. Oh, God. You hack. You bitch. We're about to find out because she's making a comeback. That's just what we need. We need more of Wendy Williams because she brings such positive energy to this world. We, we love you, Wendy. I'm very comfortable. You know, my partners with the show, mm. everybody's ready. No one is. No one cares. I have not heard one person go, oh, my God, I must have Wendy Williams come back to TV. She's so good. Wendy Williams speaks out about her ongoing absence from her daytime talk show. Yeah. And reveals when she'll return to the small screen. Please don't ever come back. And that is, you deserve to be on the small screen, not the big screen. We've got- no one needs to see that. <laughs> Got a lot to talk about. The 57-year-old TV personality opened up in a pre-recorded phone interview with Good Morning America on Thursday. That sounds legitimate. Nothing like a pre-recorded interview. Ah, oh, it sounds like that was such a hard-hitting interview. Pre-recording something with Wendy Williams while she was the one that always made people feel uncomfortable during interviews and ruined everyone else's life. But, oh, we got to have it with this narrative when we're talking about Wendy Williams. Fuck you. And despite rumors about her health and her mental well-being, Wendy insists she's doing great. That's, that's good, man. I'm glad you're doing great. I never root for anybody, well, mostly anybody, to have anything bad happen to them. But that doesn't mean we need you on TV or the radio. Health is very well, and um, I... It sounds like a good phone line, too. Health is very well. Oh, you sound like just bundle of joy. Actually, have had a few appointments. I don't care anymore. 856-49-HOPPY. It's not even fun to, like, make fun of her anymore. Like, it was fun to make fun of Wendy. <laughs> now it's just sad. You're like, just go away. Speaking of a sad man with a small penis... Vladimir Putin is doing what he can to rally support for his invasion of Ukraine. Yeah, he's kind of coming off like, I, I don't really know what's going on over there, but no one seems to be like applauding him. Like, that was a good move, Vladimir. You go, boy. We're so proud of you as Russians. Like, Russians don't really like him. So he's paying people to go to his rally. You can say whatever you want about Trump. People didn't pay to go to that rally. Or he didn't have to pay people to go to that rally. Flag-waving supporters cheered him at Moscow's 80,000-seater soccer stadium. But watch what happened during the live TV broadcast. Russian state television suddenly cut away to a patriotic song. Oh, yeah, let's dance in Russian music. Yeah, let's kill people. Shut up! Oh, I hate evil world leaders. Officials call it just a technical glitch, but some wondered if mischief was afoot after uh. that anti-war protest during a Russian news broadcast <laughs> seen around the world. It's weird seeing what's going on around the world, and you're like, oh my God, my problems are not that bad, and you kind of feel bad. Putin was... You never sounded better, Vladimir. Go fuck yourself. Dressed to the nines in a quilted Loro Piana coat with a caviar price tag of over $13,000. Vladimir likes the nice things in life. Published reports say the spectators were paid $5 to attend. <laughs> Video showed lots of people leaving the rally early after getting their tickets punched to prove they had showed up. <laughs> Despite Putin's claim during the rally that the invasion was going according to plan. Oh yeah, it's totally. Everything's going well for you, dummy. Experts say the Russian military machine is stalled. We're on the third week here. How much longer oh. can the Russians try to pull this off? Oh. The next eight to 10 days are very critical because they've got. And then here's the problem. And then you got, I don't even want to play this. You got the American media, like, like, will they be able to get it done by the deadline? Like the way they talk about things, it's like they're talking about the trade deadline in the NBA or NHL or MLB or NFL, all the sports. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, we're like, is Vladimir, like you see on Inside Edition, is Vladimir Putin insane? Yes. Like the American coverage of what's going on in the Ukraine, we're making it about us and we're proving why the whole world hates us. 
But if you type in Ukraine footage and you watch Sky News and all like the BBC and that, you're going to get legitimate coverage. And if you type in Ukraine footage Reddit, you can see tanks shooting people. That's not what Inside Edition's doing. <laughs> Let's make fun of Vladimir Putin. There's people that their lives are ruined forever. There are babies in a hospital that are trapped. And that's going on on this same globe. It really makes you put your problems in like perspective. You know what I'm saying? One person who really needs to put his problems into perspective is Machine Gun Kelly, because I don't know what the hell he's doing, man. He's losing his mind. Machine Gun Kelly had a meltdown on social media after people questioned whether he's actually emo following his transition to rock. No, he's a nerdy kid from Cleveland, Ohio, who I met when I worked on a crappy radio show up there. He's a nice dude. He's somebody from Cleveland. He's not emo. He's not rock. He's once in a lifetime. It's a once in a lifetime chance that some nerd from Cleveland's going to become emo and rock. And even if you listen to his old music from 12, from 10 years ago, Walk a Flock of Flame, Wild Boy, he keeps talking about Kurt Cobain. He wants to be Kurt Cobain. And that's fine. But Machine Gun Kelly is like a poser. And I like MGK. I respect him. But he's a poser. This is not who he is. And then when he gets mad that people are calling him a poser, it's like, just embrace being a poser. You're a poser. You're fake. That's fine. I respect you. I think you're really talented. MGK is one of my favorite dudes I've ever met. He was awesome. I talked to him for 30 minutes. And I'm not name dropping. I'm saying Colton, the real MGK. Colton, Colson, whatever his name is. That's a cool dude. Machine Gun Kelly with Megan Fox. That's a Hollywood plant. Let's get into it. Machine Gun Kelly is so over people questioning whether he's emo or not. If you were so emo, you wouldn't even care. You'd be like, didn't even notice. Didn't even know. In case you missed it. I didn't even notice that other people didn't think I'm emo because I'm so emo. And I'm so unaware of my surroundings that I don't even care that people think I'm not emo. But when it's bothering you, you're not emo. On. In case you missed it, Machine Gun Kelly pretty much did a full on 180. Mm. After starting his career as a rapper, then a pop punk artist, and now a full blown rocker. Yeah. But then all the Gen Xers that are hating on him the last 10, 15 years, when's the new rock band? 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 Rock music said, rock music said, rock music said. And then you guys get somebody and then you're like, oh, we don't like them. Shut up. After collaborating with artists like Travis Barker, Willow Smith, and more recently, Bring Me the Horizon. Ugh. Now, it's not just the music. There's no denying he certainly looks the part. Yeah, he changed his body. He got all pink in that. <laughs> Yeah, you got all pink. 856-49-HOPPY. It's 856-494-6773. It would not be an episode of Hoppy Hour if we didn't talk about the Kardashians. But this one, we're going to get to Kim, Kanye, and Pete Davidson. But this headline right here is very underrated in the role of the Kardashians. <laughs> no! Happy Hot Topic! Please don't be offended. He's sorry in advance. Could this be the start of a rekindled romance for Khloe Kardashian? Yeah. I just want to live my life and be happy. But you keep going back to Tristan. Khloe and Trey Songs were spotted together out in Los Angeles. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you heard that correctly. Trey Songs and Khloe Kardashian are banging. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I feel like Trey Songs is like the dude who puts on like his own music when he's banging her. It's on Saturday night. And then she has her show on Hulu. So they're banging on the couch and his music's playing. Gotta say, ah, or whatever her song was. And then you just hear like, oh my God, vocal fry on like the TV. A source tells ET, quote, Chloe and Trey songs were at the nice guy with a group of people for a party hosted by Justin Bieber. Oh, that sounds pretentious. They were sitting in a booth yeah. talking one-on-one -on -one together during the night. Yeah, that's, that's what you call it. They were talking one-on-one -on -one all night. Yeah. Because when I think about Khloe Kardashian and Trey Songz hanging out, I think of just them just laying there, just not, nothing going on. Nothing. Yeah. 
a deep conversation they're having. <laughs> but it appeared to be mostly friendly. Yeah, it was. The source goes on to say, at different points, they were talking closely to each other. Yeah. But it was also because the music was loud. Oh, that's why. <laughs> so what was the reasoning when they were rubbing their bodies together later on? Oh, the music just wasn't loud enough at home. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah, man. This following show has been brought to you by Happy Hour, Happy Radio. You can search Happy Radio on Stitcher, TuneIn, Spreaker, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible, Mixcloud, Deezer. We're taking over the world, baby. One download at a time. Happy Hour, Happy Hour. Doctors say the life expectancy of the average man is now 76.2 years. Seventy-six point two, but I'm already thirty-eight point one. I've wasted half my life. <laughs> half my life gone, and I'm only guaranteed thirty-eight more years. What are you looking at, loser? You're a loser. Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Well, you should be, because you are dirt. You make me sick, you big baby. Watch out, Hoppy is about to rant. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Wow! Happy Hot Topic! Pete Davidson has a new show with Lauren Michaels. It's going to be all about his kind of like a hyper reality of himself. What do you think about that? Yeah, what do you think, Seth Myers? You seem pretty jealous of Pete Davidson. I think he's a very interesting self. As Yeah, I'm pretty judgmental because I'm a boring vanilla heck of a host. And I'm jealous of the fact that Pete Davidson is better looking than me in a way. Selfs go. I made a poor choice last week. <laughs> this is my boy, Kevin. You have any questions? Yeah. That is me. I'm looking forward to it. I've always uh, enjoyed everything Pete's done. He's done a fantastic job of being very honest about himself on SNL. And I think Unlike you, Seth. Oh, I'm going to make fun of the president, but not anymore because Joe Biden's perfect because I'm a liberal hack. No wonder everyone's more popular than you. You're on original, buddy boy. That's why people have been really connected to him. And no one can connect to you, and you seem kind of jealous of that. I mean, really? Really? Oh, yeah. You were so funny when you were playing that character on SNL. That was so going to go into your 40s and 50s being an unrelatable one-liner relying on cue cards for jokes. You want to go back and co-host? No, I'm too old. Oh, yeah. It didn't prevent anybody else who was old who was going. You just know you're not funny anymore, and I respect that. Seth Meyers knows he's not that funny. Come on. His ratings prove that. No. I feel like when I went back there to host, I felt like an athlete who lost like 10 miles off his fastball. Yeah, at least you admit, at least you admit. I would really believe that Seth Myers is aware that he sucks if he just canceled his show. But you got to take the money, man. You know who's about to make a lot of money? Pregnant Rihanna. Rihanna is already embracing the role of mama bear. The 34-year-old is opening up about the type of mother she's going to be. A badass one. And it seems like she'll be a protective one. Mm. In an interview with Elle, the expectant mom revealed which Real Housewives parent she thinks she will be most like. Just sharing. <laughs> Why would you want to be like those idiots? Why not just be Rihanna as a mother? Teresa Judice from Jersey does not play about her kids. That's actually not a bad point, though. Teresa's a badass. She will flatten you about those kids. And that resonates with me a lot, because I feel like that's the type of mom I'm going to be. Hell yeah, I like that answer. Psycho about it. She oh yeah, baby. She followed up the sentiment with a cautionary tale, adding, You talk about my kids, it's over. Oh, well, you're going to have a problem with the media then. The Fenty Beauty founder and her boyfriend, ASAP Rocky, surprised fans when they announced they are having a baby earlier this year. Oh, man, I see a picture of the her and uh, ASAP Rocky. Yeah, uh, he looks like a happy dude. And, oh, my God, this outfit Rihanna's wearing? Man. Rocky surprised fans when they announced they are having a baby earlier this year. Man, he didn't want to pull out. I wouldn't, either. I wouldn't either. They may be welcoming their little bundle of joy pretty soon. All right, well... We'll keep you up to date on something that doesn't really affect your life. 
speaking of things that don't affect our life. He posted this uh, the selfie, sort of, uh, right? And and there's yeah, I'm I am a uh, Alan DeGeneres. I don't really know anything humans. So I don't even know what a selfie is. Is that what I did when I took that picture with all those celebrities eight years ago that I was pretending to be friends with, including Kevin Spacey? They're reading into it, saying that there's a tattoo that says Kim. Um, yeah, he has a few tattoos, a few cute ones, you know, that he got. Um, but this one is a, it's not, that one, the Kim one isn't a tattoo. It's actually a branding. Oh my God. Like a brand. I wonder what the relationship with Kim and Pete's mom is like. Branding. Kim Kardashian is revealing the latest gesture her boyfriend, Pete Davidson, made for her. My hero! And you're hearing that right. Yeah. The SNL star has a branding of the beauty mogul's name on his chest. Why not? Eagle Eye. <laughs> Hell yeah, buddy boy. Eye fans pointed out in this photo of Pete that Kim's name was on his chest. Dude, he's feeling himself now. I love this confident Pete Davidson. Which they thought was a tattoo. Ah! Turns out it's a brand. Yeah. When you say branding, so like literally like an iron thing yes. went onto his body yes. to brand Kim. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, good for them. <laughs> Don't care. 856, but I just played it. 49 Hobby. It's 856-494-6773. So that's all the Kardashian news. Let's see what Kanye's doing. <laughs> Father of the year! Hot topic. Kanye West has reportedly been dropped from the Grammys performance lineup. Oh man, let's bow down to the Grammys <laughs> for having some integrity. Who cares if we're going to have all time record low ratings and no one really cares about us anymore and we're going to give every award to Billie Eilish for some reason. <laughs> we're so noble and we're so much better than you that we kicked out Kanye. We're really proving a statement. We're the Grammys, we're ir irrelevant and we're very rude to the weekend. According to Variety, a rep for the Yeezy mogul confirmed a report from The Blast mm. that Ye was banned from performing on that music's sucks. biggest night yeah. amid his, quote, concerning online behavior. Oh, and nobody else that's ever won a Grammy has ever done anything concerning. Kanye is the first one. Oh, fuck off. As of Saturday, Kanye himself had not directly responded to the news. He doesn't even care. He doesn't even know what day it is. His team has yet to provide further comment. Who cares? No one cares about the Grammys. The Grammys is like, oh, we're really getting you guys. He doesn't care. 856-49 Hoppy. So there was a little bit of a texting fail between Mariah Carey and Shawn Mendes. Mariah Carey is shaking off a texting fail. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't recognize time. With Sean. I could tell. Mendez. I got to skill over this for playing the music. Because I can't play music on this show. That was it. 52 minutes in. I got to mark that. Yeah, it's an interesting story. Let us explain. So Mimi has a silly tradition with her cousin, who's also named Sean M in her phone, where they wish each other happy Thanksgiving on St. Patty's Day. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Happy St. Patty's Day. But this year, she texted the wrong Sean M. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the luck of the Irish was not on Mariah's side mm. when she realized the 23-year-old singer Sean Mendez was on the receiving end of her inside joke. <laughs> He's like, where's the dinner at? Yum, 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 yum. Doing the best I can. The Grammy winner shared the hilarious text exchange on social media. After realizing she wasn't texting with her cousin, she wrote, Wrong Sean, sorry. Also, I do realize it's not Thanksgiving. That is just a lame joke, but God bless him. <laughs> you don't realize. Yeah. Like, when you're, like, breaking up with someone, you're like, yeah. think it's the right thing. Tell me about your breakup, Sean. Like, you don't realize all the that comes after it. Oh, yeah, heartbreak. It's a pretty big thing, Sean. Sean Mendez is adjusting to single life. Oh, thank God. The singer. I was so worried. Reflected on his recent breakup with Camila Cabello in yeah. an emotional Twitter video on Friday, where he admitted that it's been a difficult transition. Oh, but I'm glad you fought through it, Sean. You're a big boy. We're so proud of you. You go, boy. You're going through something that everyone else has gone through. But because Sean Mendez is doing it. Oh, you're so noble. You don't realize. Yeah. Like when you're like breaking up with someone, you're like, they thought they'd hold me back. I think it's the right thing. It's like, you don't realize all the that comes after it. Like, which is like, who do I call when I'm like in a panic attack? Who do I call when I'm like, on the edge? Like, 
you gotta get under some women, man. You know, and like, or men. Like I think whatever you're into, but get laid. He's like, I'm making music about it. My ex dumped me four years ago, and I just became a slut. I was on Tinder and Bumble. Like, where's the vagina at? Sean Mendes, where's the music at? That's probably why he's more successful. But I'm pretty successful. I'm just making a joke. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. <sighs> let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. You want to follow the best TikTok account of all time? Ryan Hoppy Radio. You want to get the best haircut of all time? Rich Keeley, Master Barbershop at Salon Loft on Kennedy Boulevard, right next door to McDonald's. Let me let me tell you. You can go to one of the chain places. Oh, they got beautiful women and get an average haircut. My guy, Rich Keeley, I think his name might be Richard. My guy, Richard Keeley, is the best barber in all the Bay Area. You go to richkbarber.com, you sign up for an appointment, and then when you sit in that chair, how am I sent you? Happy hour. Happy hour. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio. Someone hooked me up with a flame. I'm having a nook for Err, uh, light him up. A meat wad. Here. Encourage him in his habit. That's a good smoker. When did you start smoking? This morning. I rose my wrist and I'm going to tear up. Watch out. Hoppy is about to rant. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. here it is. What up? The most listened to radio show on the <laughs> other stations are tuned in too. Oh, yeah. 856-49 Hoppy. 856-494-6773. You tweeted me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. I need a cough button. And you can always email me. Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Ryan Hoppy Radio.com. I have a few things that are on my mind before I end this show. And then play a few more news clips or whatever. Whatever comes to my mind first. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Let me tell you. I don't get people that can just binge watch a whole show in a day. You know what I like? I like watching two episodes, three days later watching two more episodes. I like spreading it out because I feel like a slut. I feel like a skank if I finish it in one day. Like I feel like I just like went to like a glory hole. Like I didn't appreciate the moment. Awesome. You know what's awful? You know what's terrible? When people text you while you're watching porn, isn't it the worst when you're just having a good time? Oh, that was weird how that ended. And uh, literally, your boss texts you or people text you and you're like, ah! first world problem. And the other thing I wrote down, quit hating on DJ Khaled. You keep saying his name and you're making him relevant. All these TikToks are making fun of DJ Khaled. Yeah, and he's... He's bond. He's got a lot of money. And you do not. You may even have a million followers on TikTok, but you don't even have one millionth of the net worth he has. No! Happy Hot Topic! You're probably closer to this person's net worth. Kanye West. Uh, it was. I was supposed to go with the uh, Julia Fox joke, but it began with Kanye. No, your net worth is not close to Kanye, but it is close to, Ju to Julia Fox, who's in this news clip. Kanye West's ex-girlfriend, Julia Fox, doesn't think he poses a threat to anyone. Ah, oh, you're a harmless guy. Let's bring him over for dinner. TMZ recently caught up with the Uncut gem star and asked her... Uncut Gems, Uncut Gems, make a new movie. You weren't even talented in that movie because you don't have talent. ...about the Yeezy founder's string of Instagram outbursts against Pete Davidson, mm. Kim Kardashian's no. new beau which started while Julia and Ye were still dating, <laughs> claiming, quote, Kanye's harmless. I just think that's his artistic, creative expression. Oh, yeah, being a dirtbag. <laughs> You're so artsy. Yeah. I'm tired of that. You know, if anybody else behaves the way Kanye does, oh, he's a dirtbag. But when it's Kanye, oh, he's being artistic. More like autistic. 
Next up, the end of an era. Maury is ending after 31 years on TV. The ah, 31 years too long. Long-running daytime talk show. That show skanked me out. Like, I, I didn't like Jerry Stringer, but I kind of liked the chaoticness of it. But man, Maury Povich bothered me. He gave me the creeps, man. So hosted by Maury Povich is going off the air. No! With original episodes airing through September. The show's going to be live. Uh, uh, will live, I'm sorry, on repeats over 30... I don't care anymore. Learn how to talk, dude. Abe, I should... Uh, Take my own advice. 856-49-HOPPY. This next headline, I'm telling you right now, is legitimately the most hypocritical thing I have ever heard. The media goes, oh, free Britney, free Britney, free Britney, free Britney, free Britney. We care about Britney Spears. We care about Britney Spears. We care about Britney Spears. But then when her social media account goes away after her conservative ship goes away and there's really nothing to cover then you're covering britney spears which you're doing the thing that made her go crazy in the first place you fucking fake media britney spears's instagram account has mysteriously disappeared again and this headline should you spent two minutes talking about britney spears which is going to probably affect her mental health the toxic singer social media page and they keep doing that she has a million songs and they use the toxic singer yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen to this. Britney Spears' Instagram account has mysteriously disappeared again. The toxic singer. No, you're the toxic media, you fucking scumbags. You're the reason she lost her mind. Or the toxic singer. You could have gone with the hit me baby one more time, but you want the word toxic because she's kind of toxic, so it's a play on words. Oh, but you're the, you're the media. You claim you care about Britney. If you're going to be a scumbag, at least be like Harvey Levin, where you don't even pretend to care about people. But Entertainment Tonight, Access Hollywood, the way they cover Britney Spears, a lot of the free Britney people. You want to really show that you care about Britney? Here's how it goes. This is the rule, because I am the authority on all things Britney Spears, not at all. Here's the thing. The reason Britney Spears went crazy is the paparazzi followed her and everybody wouldn't leave her alone. So then she gets a conservative ship. And then everybody goes, free Britney, free Britney, free Britney, free Britney. And then you're making money off of Britney. But, oh, we, we, we want to help out Britney's mental health. Yeah, because that's totally helping out her mental health, having people live off of her craziness. So then everything gets dropped. She's free. And then people continue to speculate. And then they're covering her social media going away. Man, get it together. You guys are fucking scumbags. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. And like that, he's gone.